Good day, lens. How was your weekend? We had a short video come out from Fun Dog about the Forever Winter, so let's get into it. First of all, to all the content creators that played our game this week, thank you. We really appreciate the feedback, both the positive and the negative, and that's only going to help make the game better for the whole community. Please keep sending feedback. It's what Jeff would call a target-rich environment for improvement. Let's make it the game we want. If the game is too hard, we can live with that. That's what it was intended to be. If it's hard to run, that's harder, and it's on us. We're currently working on performance updates, including DLSS for NVIDIA cards and FSR for AMD cards. For those with rigs that are having trouble with the game currently, we are doing everything we can to optimize. We saw way better results on SSDs than on spinning drives, but we also know not everybody has those, so we gotta keep pushing it lower if we can. There is an infinite number of PC configurations and early access gives us the opportunity to address as many of them as possible. Hang in there, scavs. We will have it to you soon. Now for the good news. I know a ton of people weren't able to play in the closed beta, and we wanna make sure people get a chance to benchmark it on their PC. And for those that are really on the fence, don't trip. We're gonna drop a demo in October where you can use that as a baseline to make the right decision. Again, we appreciate all the support. And to those that have concerns about our team's resolve to support the game after launch, I'd hope the mountain of awesome units we've built and have yet to implement is a good sign that we're in it till all of those and more come to life. We're building this world with you guys. We can't wait to build more. Fun dog out. So, that was a nice little video with some good information that we can talk about. Not a lot, but enough. So let's work backwards, and first and foremost, those of you who are worried and concerned that the game will not be supported past launch and will be another money pull, like that uh, zombie game that had the, what was it, a Lamborghini in the trailer that he drove through the city on that proved to be a flop of a game? Yeah, it's not looking like it's gonna be that. Um, these lads are also in it to the end, then have a ton of units that they're still looking to put out to further their world and further enrich it and further grow it. That I like to see. That's some really good information. They're not giving us just glazed gameplay trailers either. They are giving us actual gameplay where when you look at their trailers, it looks a little bit janky. So you know what you're getting into. You know the movement doesn't look smooth or crisp, but they at least have a good base of bones and some good structure that they're building up on to give us this early access which is then gonna bring us into the demo that we'll be getting in October, which we covered in the last Q&A, which is a great feature. You can watch some gameplay, see if you really like it, and maybe grab the demo as well if you don't wanna front the money right off. So that's some great news. This is one of the most consumer-friendly practices that we can have in an era of gaming that produces shit like Concord. So if you're unsure about purchasing the game, even with this week of coming early access footage and month that all this information will be coming out, you'll see more gameplay and stuff like that. It's good to see that there will still be an opportunity for you to go off and play it for yourself and see if it is something you want to invest your money in and see if it's a game for you. It might be a game that you're just into the lore and the world and the world building and the characters that are being developed within the game and that's perfectly fine. There's a lot of genres that I sideline watch in because the lore is really good. I'm excited for this game because the gameplay is what I'm looking for, and the difficulty of the game is what I'm looking for as well. They are also working on improving the optimization of the game so that we can have a better time running it and lower the current system specs of the game. Again, it's beautiful to see them not take the Todd Howard route of you need to improve your, your gaming PCs. Fuck you. Starfield runs great. <laughs> we all know it doesn't, Todd. Thank you. So cheers to that. It's all good news. Lastly, this is going to be the biggest point, and it's giving feedback that is both good and bad for a target-rich environment to improve their game. And they have said that they don't care that the game is difficult. They can live with that. It's what the game is intended to be. In the last video I made, I said that there were some concerns about the water death system. And thank you to those who provided me some information that the water cap has been raised to 80 days, so it's not a month. You now have 80 days 
to decide if you're going to come back to the game. But I'll get into that later. Almost everyone who has an interest in this game, myself included, are looking forward to the difficulty that is coming to our rigs. We're getting a game that has a huge focus on staying out of the fighting, despite having a gun. While there are features I'd like to see, such as interacting with the environment to throw debris as a distraction, I am down for getting into some good stealthy gameplay and getting out of the field with my boots on. I have plenty of games that I've backed, which are very difficult and rightfully so, such as Stone Shard, Battle Brothers, and Colony Ship. Colony Ship, by the way, is a great CRPG that tells you you are not the big goddamn hero and reminds you of it very swiftly when you stick your nose into things you shouldn't be getting into. It's one of those games that is very, very fun if you like CRPGs and many more games. These games hit a niche that is not touched on these days because of games journalists struggling with a tutorial. We all remember Cuphead. It's nice to see a section of devs who are not here to cater to the journalists but to the players who want to have a challenge. However, that doesn't mean we cannot provide critical feedback to the devs. I've always said that I will praise when praise is due and I will criticize when criticism is due. You can look at my Dark Tide track record. I intend to bounce feedback back and forth with you all, good and bad. My goal is to take the feedback that is bad and break it down to it being a game issue or a player issue. And if it is a player issue, I would like to have some good civil comments on how that player or the players can improve their gameplay to correct and adjust this issue, especially if changing the issue they're having would take away from the dev's vision and general intended difficulty of the game. I understand why a bunch of people had felt upset about the questions people had about the water system in the last video. But if people feel like their questions are answered poorly and not answered in a way that explains things clearly, concerns will build or misunderstandings. Clearly enough people have concerns about the game being a money grab and a piss off when the game fully releases. Hopefully those concerns are now alleviated. The water system conversation had a lot of great points from those who didn't take it as a personal attack. My personal favorite being that if you haven't touched a game in 80 days, are you really going to be picking it back up? Which is a great question for a lot of people. How many people here right now can say that truly they're putting a game down for 80 days plus and will be picking it up with a renewed vigor? Maybe after a major patch, but by that point, wouldn't you be starting a new game anyways? You probably would. In fact, one thing that I would like to say to the devs as an idea just going forward, that when you've suffered a water death, be it through playing the game or being idle for too long, that you are able to redo the tutorial. Have it as a toggleable option, a yes or no button. And so you can choose if you suffered a water death while playing, you can choose, no, I'm not gonna go through the tutorial, I know what I'm doing, I'm still playing the game. Or if you've been away for 80 plus days or less, depending on how much water you had saved up, that you can say, you know what? Yeah, I, uh, I forget how to play this game. I should probably do the tutorial again. And it gives you a way to start off fresh and go back into the game. And again, I know this might not be the case because maybe we come out with extra resources in the tutorial, but I mean, even then it would be a good idea to have as an option. So I'd recommend it if, you know, it sounds like a good idea, throw your hand in the ring too, if you like that idea. In the end, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. I'll always be a testing dummy and I'll put my money down on things that I'm willing to back because I like the project, I like the direction, and I like the difficulty that they are intending with this game. That's why I'm putting my money down. It's not just to say that, oh, I'm gonna test this game. It's because I am actually engaged with this project. I'm enticed by it, I'm interested in it, and I'm looking forward to it. I don't want easy games. I don't play easy games unless it's with my kids. But other than that, I like the difficulty this game is aiming to have. So I will give you the best feedback that I can possible, both good and bad. And I would like there to be civil discussions without swearing at each other, just getting a good conversation between each other of maybe it's not a game issue. Maybe it's a player issue. And I'm going to aim to present it as both how I could see it being a game issue and how I could see it being a player issue. I want to give you guys that feedback. I'll express to you guys what's working great. And I'll express to you guys some things that I think could use some fine tuning. This isn't a game, as I've said, I want it to be easy. 
We're cogs in a machine that can be forgotten. We're in a war that doesn't even know we exist until they have to swat us away like a mosquito. And then they promptly forget about us all over again. This is Grimdark, and it's a game that knows what it is. And I'm here to see it through to the end with this community. Whether you like the way I present things or not, I'm still going to make sure that I give a fair and balanced approach to everything I do within all the games that I cover. Because it's the only fair way to ensure that people who want to buy a game understand if a game is meant for them or not and don't get tricked into buying shit like Cyberpunk 2077 at launch. That's a shit feeling to have because a bunch of content creators bullshitted you and lied to you. I don't wanna be that kind of content creator and if that costs me opportunities, it costs me opportunities. I don't care. I will always put my money where my mouth is. I want everybody to have some confidence in whether or not this is a game for them. I want people to be able to decide, should I get it? Or should I just play the demo and then come back to the demo every so often? Let's work together as a community to make sure that this is going to become the best possible game as a PvE extraction shooter because there's very few like them in this industry. There's very few devs who are looking to put best practices forward for consumers rather than their investors. And that's a rarity that despite what concerns I may have, I'm willing to invest my money into. 80 days, yeah, it's a long time. I'd like to see him just toss in an extra 10 days because it would be a nice even quarter of a year to where you can say it's been a quarter of a year. Am I really picking this game back up? Probably not, but I'm excited for it. Tomorrow, it comes out tomorrow, the 24th. So let's have fun. Let's be patient with each other and let's have a good time. And let's make sure that if people have questions, we can answer those questions in a civil manner and in a polite manner. With that, my friends, please take care of yourselves and try and stay healthy and stay happy and positive if you can. And a fun dog. Keep it hard, keep it fun, and keep working. You guys are doing an amazing job. You are providing some good responses, and I'm looking forward to more. Thank you. Shout out to the patrons. Thank you so much for supporting on Patreon. You guys can also support on Patreon. There's a link in the description below. Thank you to my channel members for supporting here on YouTube as well. And you can also support for free by doing all the things that tickle the algorithm and make it giggle happily by doing everything that every other YouTuber asks you to do. Take care of yourselves. Peace.